What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So I want to use the RX100 Mark V here as a vlogging camera for a trip that's coming up. But there's no mic input on this camera so you're forced to use the built-in mics which is picked up through these two small holes on the top. However, I don't want there to be tons of wind noise in my audio because everybody hates wind noise and it can ruin an otherwise good shot. So I went on Amazon and I found these two products with three different wind muff choices. Links for which are in the description and the comments if you're interested in checking those out. But I need to figure out which one works best, so I figured I'd do a video and show you guys the results. So the first option is this felt pad looking one here. It looks like something you'd stick to the bottom of a chair or table leg. The next one here is probably something you're more used to. The standard dead cat looking wind muff. I think this one will probably perform the best given its size, but that's what we're here to find out. Finally, the smallest ones I think I've ever seen. These are about 5 millimeters in diameter. And they're just absolutely tiny. The RX100 has wind noise reduction that we're going to be trying out for each option as well. So let's find out which one works best. But before we get started, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button and please consider subscribing. All right, let's go ahead and get these installed. Well, first, we have a problem. The power button, the flash, and the viewfinder will all be obstructed even when installing the tiniest wind muffs. I've never used the flash before and I don't think I'll need to use the viewfinder shooting video. And I think we can work around the power button. All right, but before we test the felt pads, let's get a control sample. I have a small fan here that I'll set up blowing across the top of the camera, and we'll see how the mics do with no help at all, and then with the wind noise reduction turned on. All right, very first test here. Wind noise reduction is turned off in the camera, and there are no wind muffs installed. All right, now this is the exact same thing. No wind muffs installed. Wind noise reduction has been turned on. Well, that was dreadful. I'm sorry I subjected your ears to that. It seems to be pretty extreme test with noise like that, and the noise reduction really didn't seem to help at all. Now for the felt pads. Being part of the bigger two of the three options we have here, this has a large adhesive ring, which seems super overkill given the size of the mics and the camera, but we'll make it work. In order to miss the power button, I'll need to move the left one forward and let it overhang the front, but I'll probably cut off what's overhanging if I end up using this for the trip. All right, so this one, wind noise reduction turned off using the little felt pads. Uh, they're the most low profile, so they may stay on the best, uh, as opposed to this, which has got a bunch of stuff to get hung up, and opposed to this, which will just have a tiny amount of adhesive. So I'm thinking this one's going to hold the best. Wind noise reduction turned on, still the little felt pads. Any improvement? Was the wind noise reduction necessary, or was it okay before? These definitely held the strongest and were the most difficult to remove. There's an adhesive ring left, but it peels up pretty easily off the camera. Using these felt pads here resulted in a huge improvement in the sound quality, and the wind noise reduction seemed to be the most effective with these, with all of the bass and the boomy kind of wind noise that was left in this audio. So let's go ahead and move on. On to the biggest ones here. These installed just like the felt pads with no issue to speak of. All right, now we have got the big fluffy ones. Um, I would imagine these would work the best because they are the biggest and the most substantial. However, they might get hung up on stuff given their size and maybe peel off easier going in and out of pockets or bags. This is with wind noise reduction turned off. How's it sound? Now let's jump over and turn the wind noise reduction on. All right, same big fluffy ones, but this time with wind noise reduction turned on. Any difference? Does it help? Did it need any help? I don't know. These ones definitely performed the best, good enough that the wind noise reduction just made it sound worse. However, these did peel off fairly easily. If I were to use these, I'd probably get a roll of two-sided tape and punch out a little hole for the mic to ensure that they have the best chance of staying in place. On to the smallest ones. These ones were by far the most challenging to install because they were just so stinking hard to hold on to. But let's see how they do. Okay, so this is the smallest one so far. Wind noise reduction has been turned off. This one looks even more low profile than the, the little felt looking stickers, um, but the big ones did not stick very well, and I think it was because of the texture on the back. These small ones have got the same texture, but they've got kind of thicker adhesive, so uh, it's almost like it's almost like a foam pad with an adhesive on both sides, so maybe that'll stick better. We'll see. When noise reduction turned on with the tiny little fuzz balls, any better? Did it even need it? I don't know. Let's go find out. Given how extreme this test was with no wind muff at all, I think these performed admirably. Again, the noise reduction just seemed to make things a little less comfortable to listen to. But the problem with these is that they came off very easily 
I can't imagine them staying in place for any kind of storage or transportation. I won't be using these. Well, there you have it, three different wind muffs tested. If you want to pick up one of these, check the description or the comments for links. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.